Hello everyone, welcome along to my channel. My name is Suzanne and I garden and grow cut flowers in Devon in the UK. Um, this is the second part of a series of videos that I'm making about um, creating the flowers for my friend's wedding, which we've had recently. Um, and this week's video is going to be about um, making the milk churn arrangements. So she had two large milk churns and two smaller milk churns. Um, so this video will really just be doing um, the arranging of those and the mechanics that I used. If you didn't see that in the previous video, the previous video was all of the flowers and foliage that I cut for the wedding. Um, so if you want to go back and look at that one, I'll put the link for that one in the description below. Um, I do need to make an apology about the whole series of videos um, and that will be the sound quality. Um, because I have a very low subscription following and I'm very new to this, I do not have a microphone. In fact, I don't ha have a smartphone. I don't have particularly good technology for doing this. Um, and the reason that's a problem this week is because there's a lot of sound interference in the background, which is the whirring of my hydro propagator, which I just forgot to turn off. Um, so I'm really sorry about that. If you can bear with it, great. But I, <laughs> I totally get it if you can't. It it was something that I, I should have thought about. And uh, moving forward, I need to I need to learn um, from the mistakes that I make. So I did turn it off now. <laughs> and I'll turn it back on again later. Um, so anyway, if you're interested in seeing how I created the milk chance, um, stay watching. Okay, so before I start arranging anything, I'm going to do something which probably a real professional doesn't need to do, but I need to do it for my own peace of mind. And that is that I'm going to put all the flowers that are on my list for the bride's bouquet into a separate bucket that I'm going to label bride and I'm going to put it out the way so I don't accidentally steal anything from it. And that way I can make sure that the very best flowers go in there as well. And I'll do the same for the three um, bridesmaids as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead, go into the um, workshop there where it's nice and cool and just uh, with my list and just put those flowers to one side in a bucket and we'll deal with them tomorrow. Um, and then we can go ahead and start doing the tables with a bit more confidence that I'm not punching flowers that I shouldn't. Okay, so I'm going to tackle the two large milk churns um, and I'm doing those first because they're slightly easier because they're only going to be seen from the front um, because they're going to be against the wall. These ones are going to be moved so when they're at the chapel they'll be against the wall but then when they go to the venue you will be able to see the back of them but it, still the front will be the most important thing. So. I'm going to start by greening them up, but before I do that, I'm going to put some water into my receptacles. So there's going to be a lot of foliage going into these, um, so I've got a few different types of foliage to try and give it a bit of variation. So the foliage I'm going to use are uh, corn bean, alder and snowberry to start and then I've got um, some Greek crest to add in as well which just give a little bit of difference in colour. So in case you didn't watch my previous video, I just want to show you, I've got a bucket sat in this milk churn with um, chicken wire in it. And I've done that with both. And, and I, so far I've put five horn bean into each churn. Where the alder is going a little bit droopy, I'm just making sure that I'm 
recutting the end of the stem at a really sharp angle and then cutting up the stem. Um, I haven't used alder before, but I had heard from somebody else that alder was okay. And I originally was going to be using um, hazel, um, but all the hazel was so badly damaged um, that I I was sort of, it was raining and I was trying to find something that I could use instead and I heard that alder was okay. I use alder a lot um, in the winter but not the leaves. I use the, um, well these little things when they go, um, they go really almost burgundy plummy colour which at Christmas is absolutely fantastic. So anyway, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned. I really hope this alder is going to hold up. Because <laughs> if it doesn't, uh, it would be a real pain to have to take these apart. You wouldn't, you wouldn't very easily be able just to pull the alder out without everything coming out. Right, I'm going to get the snowberry now. I don't like with milk churn arrangements is where the flowers look just really up like I really like them to be a bit wider so it's a bit more in proportion um, so they, they've both got um, 15 stems of foliage in now five of um, hornby five of alder and five of snowberry um, and I'm going to go ahead and put um, some Greek cress in now uh, before I start adding any flowers I haven't taken the leaves off the green crest, so that time lapse was just not working because basically I've got to stop and do this. So what I'll do, I'll get the green crest put in and then I'll show you what it looks like. Sometimes I think with um, large arrangements like this that the foliage is actually more important than the flowers. Uh, so I can see the wire a bit at the front here. Um, I'm not sure what smaller flowers I've got. We'll put the flowers in and then I'll probably push that a bit, um, add in a few extra things. I have got that jasmine, which is for this, but I, I wasn't sure if I was going to add that now because obviously I'm not going to travel these buckets in the churn, so it might be better to add that on the day. Um, right, let's get some flowers. Okay, more green. Um, poppies, uh, or poppy seed heads. So I just need to prepare those. Okay, so that's the poppies. I'm going to do the army now, and you should know if I switch you off, it's probably because I'm swearing because I don't like working with army. I love how it looks, but I get it. It's a bit like the breezer, the quaking grass. I get it all tangled, and then I end up having to cut bits of it off. So. Wish me luck. I mean, it's all tangled in the bucket. I've said it before, I don't know how some of the florists I watch on YouTube work from a bucket. I mean, I am today, but I wouldn't if I was doing bouquets or things like that. So I'm just looking at sort of the height here, working out where I think the bottom of the bucket is, and then snipping the stems before I put them in because. Because of the chicken wire, it's really hard to pull stems in and out. And then, look, I've just noticed that. That'll be a real nuisance. I want to really make sure I get rid of anything like that that can get tangled. Okay, I'm See, it's already not playing ball. <laughs>
Right. Okay, that's my five stems. Um, so then I'm, I'm not trying to make both of the arrangements look the same. I'm just putting the same number of stems in each one so that they're, they're similar. Uh, right, I'll go to the um, shed and see which flower goes in next. Okay, it's honey walk, but I'm going to put you on a time lapse. Excuse the hair, by the way. A little mad professor. Okay, so that's the syrinth, the honey warten. Um, we're getting there now, folks. Um, let's see what we've got left to go in. Oh, there's still quite a lot, actually. Okay. <laughs> there's still more than I thought. Um, I'll go and get to the next thing. Okay, so we've got some of the loose strife and some of the pearl. Um, this is mainly green and white with just the hint of the purple um, and that is deliberate it's because it will stand out quite well and um, there is an, another little bit of purple to go in um, but yeah a, a lot of white mainly um, These are a little bit shorter on the stem, so they'll go near the front. Cut them down and for them to not be long enough. So a bit more purple. I actually think I'm getting there now and I'm I may not add everything I was going to add. I'll see, because I do just need to fill the bottom a bit more. So I think I was going to put one fever foo, which could probably fill the bottom. But then I had put on my list here that oregano, but I don't know if we need it. I think it would be too much. I think sometimes to draw a line, and I like the green and the white with a bit of purple. So I think we'll leave the oregano off. But probably, yes, just put a bit of fever foo at the bottom there. So I'm going to take the side um, stems off these just to make them a bit easier to work with. I'm limited for space so I'm putting them right in front of you, sorry about that. Um, right, so he, this one's got a natural curve which I want to use. This is his best side so it's going to go I just want to make sure he's actually going in the bucket. Again, cut the side.
that's not going in, and that's because it's not, it's going down the back of the chair. I think it must nearly be time for a cup of coffee as well. That's the real reason I don't want to add any more flowers. It must be time for a break. I'm very slow at floristry and I'm not working tomorrow. I've got all day to do this wedding um, and I'll be at home on my own, so that's great. But I still don't know if that's enough time for me at my speed. It might, I might be putting in a late one tomorrow. So that's, that's what I'm trying to work out. Do I put in a late one tonight? Or do I get to bed early so that I'm revitalized for the morning? You can't help me because this video won't go up in time. So I can't even take your advice. I'm just gonna have to go with what I think Okay, I will show you these in a minute, but I am just going to add the fever food. Um, and then I think that's probably nearly enough. Okay, so I'll show you what I've done in a minute. I have added um, a couple of sweet peas. Um, and as I say, I'm going to add jasmine to these, to just so that something slightly trailing, but not until Friday, which is Day of the and I just put in fever food just to fill these gaps at the front. The bride particularly likes fever food and daisies, so it was quite important that there was some of it in the wedding, but also not too much. Right. So what didn't I put in that I was supposed to put in? The toad flats I didn't put in because it wasn't very good and we don't need it. Um, I'm not going to put the jasmine in yet because I can't. Snowberry's in, hornbeam's in, hazel's not in but we substituted it. Uh, the cress is in, poppy's in. Ah. Yeah, breezer. I just put, we'll just put a bit of um, greater quaking grass in just for that like, airy feel. So there's not a lot of space in here. I think you'll get the idea a bit better at the venue. Um, but here they are. Um, obviously they can't stay here now. I need to try and get them in the workshop. So I'm going to have to clear an area to put them. Hi there, yeah, you join me in the workshop now. I'm going to be um, doing arrangements in these half turns. Um, and what I've done is I've um, just used some duct tape um, to give this a soft, not such a hard edge, because I'm actually setting glass vases inside, both the, both the glass vases and I'm using chicken wire in the vases as well. Um, and I'm going to obviously start, very importantly, by adding some water into the vases. Okay, and then I'm going to use a lot of um, greenery, a lot of foliage to start. Um, I don't I don't think you can see the second churn actually. Um, that's the top of it, so you will see it when I start putting things in it. Um, and the main ingredients to fill it out are going to be hornbeam, alder and snowberry, which I'm not sure which order these videos are going, but I've done some large churns and I use the same foliage, all for the same wedding. So I'll go ahead um, and put um, these um, chines are slightly smaller so I might get away with three stems of each and we'll do that and see what it looks like.
Okay, so I've greened the churns up. Um, and yes, I haven't put as much greenery in um, as the ones we had before. Uh, so now I can start adding some flour. Yeah. I am going to have to shout, it's raining now. Um, some of the snap drones I cut this morning have snapped. So I've been out and cut a couple more. Um, so I don't think this colour is going to work anymore because I've not got the right ratio. It's a bit annoying because that colour probably worked better with the purple apricot theme. Um, but hopefully by adding the other things it will be fine and nobody will notice. Okay, so this and that dragons. Now we'll do the Ami. So I ran out of battery when I was filming the small churns, so that's why there's a bit missing at the end of that. But um, they've, they've turned out okay. It took me a while to get the proportions right, um, but I think we got there. Well, thank you very much for watching today, everybody. Um, part three will be coming up and part three we're going to be tackling um, the table centres, uh, so the te 10 um, table centres, um, and yeah, that'll be coming up soon. Thanks very much.